everybody. Let me get my screen sharing going. Keynote. All right. I think that should be working okay. All right. Um, welcome to the second session of Signum Academy's Narnia Camp. We're looking at the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe together. My name is Jennifer Raimundo, and um, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to going through this book with you. All right. Um, last week we, or last week, ha, yesterday, um, or whenever it is that you watched it, we saw uh, Lucy enter Narnia for the first time through the wardrobe. And today we're going to see another sibling join her. Um, if you have any questions throughout the program today, you are more than welcome to type them uh, into the chat box, I mean, to the question box, and that should be, um, uh, oh, I'm getting a note that my sharing is a little off, so let me see if I can fix that. Um, All right, let's see, is this any better? Um, I'll see if that's any better. Uh, so, uh, yes, if you would like to ask any questions, because I'll be trying to ask you all a few questions throughout this presentation. Um, so if you want to reply or ask a question of your own, just type into the question chat box in some on some devices the uh, question box collapses. So if that happens to you, there should be a little orange button with a white arrow on it, and that will open up the question box for you again. All right, seems like we're still having slide sharing problems. Is this, is this better? Is this better at all? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Change the view in the room. All right. Are we seeing only the slides? Sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. All right. Um, so let's see what happens here if I do this. Is that better? Um, okay, hopefully, hopefully this is working and we'll just play around with it until we get to the proper uh, screen sharing setting. Um, okay, so today uh, we are looking at chapters three and four of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and we'll, we'll be concentrating on the character of Edmund. Um, as he compares in contrast to his sister Lucy, uh, because he gets to do some exciting things today. Uh, so let's move on, uh, which I cannot do because of our sharing problems. So um, I'm gonna have to stop sharing my screen again. All right. Let's see what we're doing. Mm. All right, I am going to see if this works. All right, you might see my entire screen and I'm not sure how to do that but this is this is what we're gonna work with today um, okay uh, let's make sure that I can still all right okay so 
we're going to look at Edmund and Lucy in a new world. As we learned last time, this new world is Narnia, but we're going to see that the Narnian adventure that Lucy had is very different from the Narnian adventure Edmund is gonna have. And we're going to talk a little bit about maybe why that is, okay? So, and I'd love to hear from you guys uh, if uh, you are doing this live. Um, so, questions for today are, how does Edmund respond to Lucy's adventures in Narnia? And how does he handle his own adventure? We're gonna spend some of our time on Edmund's response to Lucy's adventure, but most of our time we're going to be uh, working through chapters three and four, which is Edmund's own adventure in Narnia. All right, so let's go to the next slide if possible which it is not, again, being possible to do. Uh, so I'll just do this. All right. Um, OK, so Lucy comes back from her Narnian adventure, and she thinks that she's been away for a long time, right? I've been away for hours and hours, said Lucy. The others all stared at one another, so Peter, Edmund, and Susan. Uh, Batty, said Edmund, tapping his head. Quite batty. What do you mean, Lou? asked Peter. What I said, answered Lucy. It was just after breakfast when I went into the wardrobe, and I've been away for hours and hours and had tea, and all sorts of things have happened. Don't be silly, Lucy, said Susan. We've only just come out of that room a moment ago, and you were there then. She's not being silly at all, said Peter. She's just making up a story for fun, aren't you, Lou? And why shouldn't she? So Peter, again, is getting in his explaining role. And Susan is, is trying to mother the situation. Um, no, Peter, I'm not, she said, Lucy. It's, it's a magic wardrobe. There's a wood inside it, and it's snowing, and there's a fawn and a witch, and it's called Narnia. Come and see. The others did not know what to think, but Lucy was so excited that they all went back with her into the room. She rushed ahead of them, flung open the door of the wardrobe and cried, now go in and see for yourselves. Okay, so we have Lucy, as we saw last time, she's a very eager, trusting sort of person. Um, she really believes, uh, she believed that it was possible something like Narnia could happen and then she saw it for herself um, and so now she's she is so uh, eager about Narnia that even her siblings are following her to see hey is this is this Narnia thing for real however um, Susan of course is quite uh, what we'd call rational and doesn't think that Narnia is real. She, she can't understand how the time sequence works because Lucy has said she's away for hours, but Lucy is is uh, has only been gone for a few minutes from Susan's perspective. Peter is trying to explain how Lucy is being quite nice and having a good time and just making up a bit of fun since they're all bored in an old professor's house. But then we have Edmund, and Edmund says the least at this point, but it's very telling what he says. He just says that she's batty, which is uh, a 1940s British way of saying that she's gone nuts. She's going a little loopy. She's crazy. Um, so Edmund doesn't try to understand Lucy or uh, ask what she's doing, what her, what her experience has been. He just assumes that she's crazy. Um, and that, again, puts him in a bit of a superior position, right? Because Edmund doesn't like being the youngest. So if he puts Lucy down, who's a bit younger than him, that makes him feel a little bit more confident as the third uh, youngest sibling or third oldest sibling. Okay, so let's go uh, to the next slide to our question, our first question. Um, why did Edmund's behavior toward Lucy upset Lucy more than Peter and Susan's behavior did? So Lucy is really excited about Mr. Tumnus and Narnia. She comes in to tell her siblings, share all this joy with them, and none of them believe her. 
In the next passage that we're going to read, we'll see that even though Peter and Susan didn't believe her, it's Edmund's disbelief that really gets Lucy down, and we want to talk about why. Um, while I'm reading the passage, I'd love for any of you to type in what you think might be a reason uh, Lucy responds uh, so much more sadly to Edmund's uh, behavior than she does to Peter and Susan's. Um, what is it about Edmund that's really bothering her? Uh, so let's read that passage. Um, Edmund just makes things miserable for, for Lucy. For the next few days, she, being Lucy, was very miserable. She could have made it up with the others quite easily at any moment if she could have brought herself to say that the whole thing was only a story made up for fun. But Lucy was a very truthful girl, and she knew that she was really in the right and she could not bring herself to say this. The others, who thought she was telling a lie, and a silly lie too, made her very unhappy. The two elder ones did this without meaning to do it, but Edmund could be spiteful, and on this occasion, he was spiteful. He sneered and jeered at Lucy, and kept on asking her if she'd found any other new countries and other cupboards all over the house. What made it worse was that these days ought to have been delightful. The weather was fine and they were out of doors from morning to night, bathing, fishing, climbing trees, and lying in the heather. But Lucy could not properly enjoy any of it. And so things went on until the next wet day. So we have Peter and Susan who come to, to just think that Lucy is lying for a reason they don't understand, but they're not mean about it. It, it makes Lucy sad and unhappy. Uh, that they don't believe her. But Edmund's disbelief goes beyond that. He starts making fun of her. He starts bullying her um, in, in a way and pretends that there are worlds all over the place. Since he doesn't believe Lucy's world, he makes up many, many more just to make Lucy cry and be sad now. Is being spiteful a good thing? Obviously not. Uh, one thing that we are going to see as a huge contrast between Edmund and Lucy is that Edmund, Edmund can be mean for the sake of being mean. Lucy, on the other hand, as we see in this paragraph, she's a truthful girl. She could make her life a lot easier by just saying that Narnia doesn't really exist. But Lucy realizes that it does, and she's not willing to lie about it, not even for the sake of making things easier with her siblings. She's going to stick to what she sees as right, and she's going to do it uh, kindly, but she's going to do it firmly. Edmund, on the other hand, doesn't even care about what's right, only cares about um, making sure that he's seen as a grown-up and better and superior uh, than Lucy. And so he, he's willing to do the wrong thing in order to get what he wants. He's willing to make fun of Lucy in order to be seen as someone who is far above his little sister. Um, so he begins to make things miserable by not caring about the people around him and not caring about the truth. Um, so let's see how this plays out. Uh, of course, the story would be quite sad and boring if left there. So we have to see what happens with Edmund. How is Edmund going to grow in this story? C.S. Lewis, of course, lets him grow. But first, he has to have Edmund grow a little backwards. Remember how Edmund is so preoccupied with being the oldest? I'm sure we've all been there in one way or another. We just want to be older than people think that we are or behave more maturely than people expect from us. And that can be a good thing, but many times that can be a bad thing when we don't learn to appreciate our given position. So Edmund has to learn what is to be a real grown up, what it is to be really mature. And the way that he does that at first is by acting more like a child than even Lucy does. So there's a big low before he starts his growing process in the story. And of course, that growing process begins when he first encounters Narnia. Um, so Edmund finds something new to see. 
as you can see in the picture, uh, he is walking through the wardrobe, which is what happens next in the story. Um, our question for this part is, uh, what are some differences between Edmund's attitude and Lucy's attitude when they each enter the wardrobe? So we saw last time how Lucy is very eager. She's a little shy, but she's courageous because her curiosity and enjoyment of the wonder that is before her makes her push past her fear. Um, but let's, so keeping that in mind, let's see how uh, Edmund responds to this situation. All right, it's a bit of a long passage, but we'll, we'll work through it. Um, now the steps she had heard Lucy were those of Edmund because Edmund is following Lucy into the wardrobe and he came into the room just in time to see Lucy vanishing into the wardrobe. He at once decided to get into it himself, not because it, he thought it a particularly good place to hide, but because he wanted to go on teasing her about her imaginary country. He opened the door. There were the coats hanging up as usual and a smell of mothballs and darkness and silence and no sign of Lucy. She thinks I'm Susan come to catch her, said Edmund to himself. And so she's keeping very quiet and at the back. He jumped in and shut the door, forgetting what a very few foolish thing this is to do. Then he began feeling about and was very uh, for Lucy in the dark. He had expected to find her in a few seconds and was very surprised when he did not. He decided to open the door again and let in some light. But he could not find the door either. He didn't like this at all and began groping wildly in every direction. He even shouted out, Lucy, Lou, where are you? I know you're here. All right, so this is an almost complete opposite experience than what we saw Lucy experiencing when she first enters the wardrobe. When Lucy first enters the wardrobe, she thinks that something could really be exciting in the wardrobe. She thinks it's worth exploring. She is I keep using this word, she's eager. She wants to see what life has for her and she's excited in a happy way about it. Um, and she's pretty sure of herself that it's worth exploring. So she goes into the wardrobe and she leaves the door open because Lucy's always making sure that she's in the light. She makes sure that the light of the spare room trickles into the wardrobe and what leads her forward after she pushes back through the coats is that there's a light up ahead. So she goes from one light to the next light. Edmund has a, a different approach. First, the reason why he's approaching the wardrobe isn't because he thinks that there's anything inside. He's not excited about what life can bring. He's not thinking that there's anything beyond what he sees. He's just wanting to make fun of Lucy. He is going into the wardrobe in order to be mean. So he already has a spiteful heart when he is entering this wardrobe. Um, and then we see him forgetting to close the door. Now this is a little detail, but I think it's kind of interesting that Edmund is wanting to be so much a grown up and trying to act older than he is and be better than Lucy. And yet he forgets these simple things like making sure he leaves a door open um, because he's so intent upon teasing Lucy. So his bad motives are crowding out any good that he could be doing as, as far as being more mature. He forgets about the door and closes it and he locks himself into the wardrobe. I'm a bit of a klutz and I can get into these sorts of scrapes all the time, but hopefully it's not because I'm trying to tease my little sibling. Unfortunately for Edmund, he doesn't have very a very uh, nice attitude when he's entering this wardrobe. And so he blocks himself out uh, from the light. He can't find the light. Lucy was always able to see the light and Edmund cannot. Um, but his desire to keep making fun of Lucy drives him forward and that desire to tease her quickly turns into fear. So we remember when Lucy entered the wardrobe, that she was a bit nervous, maybe. Uh, she was a bit shy, a bit fearful, but she was pretty confident in moving forward. Edmund, on the other hand, is terrified. The only thing that's pressing him into Narnia now is that he wants to find 
where Lucy is because honestly, he's he's getting a little scared. He couldn't see the light, and so he starts groping wildly in every direction, as C.S. Lewis puts it. He doesn't like where he is at all. So he shouts out to his little sister for protection and comfort. So we see Edmund's goal is to be older than he is, and because of the way that he's trying to achieve that goal, which is very mean and spiteful, he's getting the complete opposite outcome, that he is now having to look to his younger sister for help. So that, those are some interesting contrasts. We're going to keep seeing them. Um, he now remembered that he being Edmund, of course, that he had been looking for Lucy. So now Edmund is in Narnia. He's come out into the woods and uh, he had forgotten uh, about Lucy in his shock and awe and seeing the woods. So uh, he's not exactly taking care of the people he loves, right? He's, he's just thinking about himself. He had been looking for Lucy and also how unpleasant he had been to her about her imaginary country, which now turned out not to have been imaginary at all. He thought that she must be somewhere quite close. And so she's, he, he shouted, Lucy, Lucy, I'm here too, Edmund. There was no answer. Ugh, she's angry about all the things I've been saying lately, thought Edmund. And though he did not like to admit that he had been wrong, he also did not much like being alone in this strange, cold, quiet place. So he shouted again. He shouted, uh, I say, Lou, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. I see now you were right all along. Do come out, make it pax. Still, there was no answer. Just like a girl, said Edmund to himself, sulking somewhere and won't accept an apology. All right. So now we have Edmund uh, still looking for Lucy. He's remembered that he's actually quite scared and wants to find his little sister. He's also recalled how mean he has been. And he doesn't want to admit that. But he sees that it's better to ask uh, to, to say that he's sorry than to get stuck in the woods in the woods by himself. So his fear is making him say, I'm sorry, rather than any true repentance on his part, right? So making it, by the way, making it Pax, uh, it's just a way to say, let's let's uh, make it peace, right? So he's calling for a truce. Let's be friends again. Um, so, but we also see Edmund not assuming the best about his sister Lucy. Again, he has thought that she's crazy. He's treated her like uh, just a little child with no input. And now he's assuming that she's so mad at him, she won't do the right thing, that she's sulking somewhere and won't accept his apology. Now, is this true? No, but Edmund, since he has a spiteful heart, is assuming that the people around him are having a spiteful heart. And that's a really good example to us that when we're um, not maybe behaving the best way or not thinking the best way about ourselves and other people, we start to think the worst about the other person. So Edmund is in so many different ways just putting himself in a dark box. He is cutting himself off from his siblings, just like he cut off the light from the wardrobe. And now he's lost in Narnia, whereas Lucy had been an open, cheerful, eager person and courageous and kind and had found a fawn, Mr. Tumnus, like we saw last time. And she made pretty good friends with him. Um, her Narnia experience was a great deal of fun, full of magic and wonder and joy. And a story, as we began to see in the previous session, and we'll continue to see that there seems to be a problem with the White Witch and humans and all that. We don't really know what's going on there. But even so, even with the difficulties of the circumstance, Lucy was able to uh, be confident and, and behave well, respond well to the situation. Here we have Edmund completely losing it, really. He can't, he can't do anything on his own. Um, and he is thinking the worst about the people around him. 
particularly Lucy in this case, of course. So it's in this state of mind that Edmund meets somebody. Okay, uh, let's just look at this for a moment. Here we have Edmund. This is this is uh, artwork by Pauline Baines. She was uh, one of the original illustrators for the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, so here we have Edmund, and he comes across a queen in a sleigh that's drawn by white reindeer, has bells, and there is a dwarf. All right. Now, if you see that picture, she doesn't exactly seem to be a happy sort of person. So let's find out what is going on. And the question that we'll be asking here again is how does Edmund interact differently with the queen than Lucy did with Mr. Tumnus? So just like we've seen, there's a huge contrast between the way that Edmund gets into Narnia, his attitude when he gets into Narnia and what he finds there, uh, than, than what happened with Lucy. Um, there's going to be a very big contrast along the same lines between the person and conversation Edmund has versus the uh, person and conversation Lucy has when she meets Mr. Tumnus. Okay, so next slide. All right, this is the first conversation between the Queen and Edmund. Stop, said the lady, and the dwarf pulled the reindeer up so sharp that they almost sat down. So already C.S. Lewis is giving us hints that this isn't a very gentle scene. These people aren't very nice. The reindeer, the reindeer are suffering pulling this sleigh, right? Then they recovered themselves and stood champing their bits and blowing. In the frosty air, the breath coming out of their nostrils looked like smoke. And what, pray, are you, said the lady, looking hard at Edmund. I'm, I'm, my name's Edmund, said Edmund rather awkwardly. He did not like the way she looked at him. The lady frowned. Is that how you address a queen? She asked, looking sterner than ever. I beg your pardon, your majesty. I, I didn't know, said Edmund. Not know the queen of Narnia, cried she. Ha, you shall know us better hereafter. But I repeat, what are you? Please, your majesty, said Edmund. I don't know what you mean. I'm at school. At least I was. It's the holidays now. Okay, so this is Edmund's first meeting with the Queen of Narnia. Now, all of us would be nervous on meeting a queen for the first time, I should think. But um, we see that Edmund uh, is not as composed as Lucy is. She, he uh, stumbles around what his name is. He's very confused as to where he's come from. Lucy gives simple answers. Edmund is just dazzled, dazed, confused. And he's being spoken to by a pretty imposing figure who doesn't seem to be very nice, right? The queen is not like Mr. Thomas. The queen doesn't respond with a sort of uh, equal politeness. The queen is just you need to address me this way, and how can you be so silly as to not know who I am? So Edmund is not in the best position. He's not in the best company. The conversation goes on. But what are you, said the queen again? Are you a great overgrown dwarf that has cut off its beard? No, your majesty, said Edmund. I never had a beard. I'm a boy. A boy, said she. Do you mean you are a son of Adam? Edmund stood still saying nothing. He was too confused by this time to understand what the question meant. I see you are an idiot, whatever else you may be, said the queen. Answer me once and for all, or I shall lose my patience. Are you human? Yes, your majesty, said Edmund. All right. We see the same uh, story carrying out. The queen's very, very mean, um, and Edmund is so overwhelmed by her uh, position and by her direct questions and by her mean way of talking to him that he is basically left in a puddle of confusion. This isn't the same as Lucy and Mr. Tumnus where they were able to have a conversation that got somewhere even though they were at first confused. Remember we were talking about the familiar and the strange meeting? 
they were able to work that out with kindness to become friends. We're here. Um, the strange is treated as silly, and um, Edmund is left not knowing how to respond, and he's already coming in with a lack of kindness to begin with. So there's no way that this conversation could go well. We will only learn how badly it goes if we keep going because it gets worse and worse. All right. But what we're interested in is the character of Edmund and Lucy. Um, so in the next few slides, we're going to be asking, is Edmund courageous and kind like Lucy was? I want to know what um, you all think. Uh, how was, was Edmund in a, an uncomfortable position and that's why he responded the way that he did? Or do you think his character is playing into this? Do you think that Lucy would do the same thing if she were in this position? So keep those questions in mind as we go through the meeting between the queen and Edmund. All right. Ha, said the queen, speaking more to herself than to him. Edmund, by the way, has just explained that he got into Narnia, her world, she calls it her dominions, um, has entered into Narnia through a door. And this makes her very upset. A door? A door from the world of men? I have heard of such things. This may wreck all. But he is only one, and he is easily dealt with. As she spoke these words, she rose from her seat and looked Edmund full in the face, her eyes flaming. At the same moment, she raised her wand. Edmund felt sure that she was going to do something dreadful, but he seemed unable to move. Then, just as he gave himself up for lost, she appeared to change her mind. My poor child, she said in quite a different voice. How cold you look. Come and sit with me here on the sledge, and I will put my mantle around you, and we will talk. Edmund did not like this arrangement at all, but he dared not disobey. 